Uh, is this working? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, my name is Alin, and with my colleague Gracian, Hi. I will talk about the new buzzword in the React Native now, and in React, hooks, and how we became hooked on hooks. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> uh, we have a, we have a great mobile community in Subvision, and besides iOS and Android, we also do React Native and Clos platforms. Um, so when this came up, uh, we were excited to get it in React Native also, and now we want to share some of our experience with uh, with hooks and how we ended up using them. So let's start with the beginning. Uh, what's a hook? And then why do we need them, right? Why do we need hooks? Why did they, were they invented? Then we'll go briefly how to use them, and then a real example in using React Native. And then what's next? What do we do from here? So let's start with what is a hook. And we didn't find a clear definition. I don't think there is a clear definition. So I think this is it. Right? <laughs> now functions can have state in React. Um, how many of you use React or have used React here? You keep, you know, ah, okay, quite a lot. Okay, how many of you have heard, have you heard about hooks? Oh, okay, nice. so that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of having a coffee. Okay, so um, we didn't find a clear definition, as I said, so mostly they are described about what they do. And because we are all developers, engineers, and pretty practical guys, we don't like definitions. So what they do, it's enough for us. So they uh, let us use the state and other React features without writing a class. So who likes classes in React? <laughs> hey, I know you come from a Java, Java background. <laughs> my colleague there. So yeah, uh, functions seem to be a, more be a better mechanism for code reuse. Uh, moving logic within functions is better, it's easier, they are reusable uh, and more testable. So hooks are ba basically functions uh, that let you use state and lifecycle for functional components. So you don't need to write classes in order to build React components anymore. Uh, I don't know, in our opinion, uh, there should be one consistent way to build React components. Now we have both ways. And functions for us are an obvious choice uh, because you can uh, debug them easier, you can diagnose them easier, you can reuse them, uh, you can compose them, and so on. So now you can use stateful logic also with functions. So in our opinion, that's great. But why, why hooks? Uh, why do we need them? Some of you, those who raised your hands about the classes, would argue that we were fine before. I mean, there was a clear way to do things. Uh, you would use a class when you need the state, and you would use uh, functional components when you won't, wouldn't need a state, right? Um, clear separation, one is a state, no, one is without state. But now, what happens if you need to refactor something or the requirements change and now you don't know if you will need a state in the future or not? What do you choose? So that's a problem. So class components, for those of you that don't use React, um, allow you to use the states and the lifecycle methods from React. Functional components are pure functions. You, write, you can write them in plain vanilla JS and uh, they don't have access to any state, uh, they just render, they use props and then render something on the screen. So yeah, we were in a good state, so why do we need hooks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what's the problem, what's the big problem? Uh, we often start with uh, simple components that might look uh, simple for us and then they grow and they grow and we are starting having problems testing them. We are starting having problems uh, actually trying to refactor them. And yeah, we might end up in a spot where we end with complex patterns uh, that 
a junior or an entry level uh, developer might not understand or has difficulties uh, reading our code. We understand our code because we wrote it, but the others might not. So uh, what's the biggest issue uh, in using class components? It's uh, state, it's uh, state logic, it's painful to extract and uh, to compose components in such a way that the state might be reused and not duplicated. So um, yeah, we end up with uh, even components that are um, wrapped around other components and wrapped around another component. So we, if we take a, a simple example of a React application that uses Redux and probably one navigator, then the start component, the app component, is already wrapped into higher order components. And that's, that's a thing that creates confusion. So, yeah, uh, we end <laughs> up with this, with something like that. <laughs> yeah, so I come from an Android background. So when I first tried to do a React uh, native app to see uh, if I can try a mobile cross-platform approach, uh, and I saw a code for high-order components, I think my jaw dropped. I mean, what uh, is this? So, yeah, I think this is a problem for developers that want to switch technologies. Yeah, it's a barrier. Well, yeah, there are multiple issues that we have when actually writing code in, in React. So, as I said, the application component is a no-brainer. We are starting that as a class component, yeah? Or we used to start that as a, a class component because uh, we would need uh, some state or lifecycle events. So, yeah, for that one, we, we were clear. But when we got to smaller components, we know that the best practices say that we should use dumb components, not smart components, as often as possible. So what's a smart component? Smart component is a component that actually uh, holds state and lifecycle events and understands the application. Dumb components are purely, purely presentational. So yeah, uh, going to a path, towards a path where we need to use more dumb components and that stresses the, the smart ones. So um, we end up with different approaches, high, uh, high order components and uh, uh, render props, as I said. And uh, you also might end up uh, uh, pushing code that actually might be a functional component. So we had some examples uh, where a, a class component was pushed and uh, a single line of code, a console log, was entered do not remove this, linter will yell or something like that, because <laughs> yeah, uh, we, know, we knew that somewhere in the future we will transform that component into a smart component uh, that also, uh, will hold state. So that's a bad practice. So yeah, I'm not really, really, really into that. Uh, one last thing that I have added there is the confusion, uh, class confusion. Uh, so that's a twofold. The first one, it's actually the one that I explained when to use a class component or a function. The other one is actually uh, an issue of uh, object-oriented uh, programs. Uh, and I'll, I'll say something that Joe Armstrong said. He said that actually the problem with object-oriented uh, languages uh, is that the, they carry around a lot of things. So a better translation of that also given by him, was that if you ask for a banana, you will get the gorilla holding the banana and the entire jungle. So this is a clear reference to the constructor and the software uh, property uh, method. So how to use hooks? Yeah, let's start with the, how we were, how we would use to write code before hooks. So let's take a counter uh, example. So you would have the constructor that comes with the, with the component. Uh, you would set the state there. And then you would need another method, the setState method, um, to update the state. Yeah, this is, I think, pretty, pretty basic. And then you would have the render function, right? So here we, you would use uh, handle counter to update, to increment the counter, uh, and to update the state. So uh, for me, this is really confusing. Not this code, but uh, the keyword this. <laughs> you, you have to use it a lot. And in, uh, in, in React, that's not really 
objective oriented, it's not like Java. This can be really confusing. What does this refer to? So, how does this code look with uh, hooks? Yeah. So, first of all, I hate slides that are actually on two slides. Actually, code, code that's, that's, uh, that's on two slides. slides. Yeah. So, mine is on only one. <laughs> so, yeah, the entire two, uh, the previous two slides are actually in this one, and the magic is in the, that first line uh, where we use the use state actually. So, let's explain it a little bit more. So what's, what's that's the hook? Yeah, that, that's the hook actually. <laughs> that's the magic. So, U-state uh, lets you use local state without actually uh, uh, declaring a class. So you have to use this in a functional component, and it has has to be in, uh, in the top uh, call. So we cannot use a, a hook inside a conditional or an if or something like that. Um, in this case, the use state hook uh, takes one argument and returns an array. Uh, by destructuring this array, we can get actually the state and a callback to set that particular state. Um, okay, so uh, what's this? Actually, this is the equi equivalent to a lot of uh, things that we had to do in class components. So in constructor, we had to set state, and uh, then we, when we need to, needed to update, we had to set the state again with the new value. So actually, with this one line, we get all those. Um, yeah. Uh, state, uh, using the use uh, state hook, we can actually use anything for, uh, to store. Um, uh, this creates a local uh, independent uh, state. So uh, if I wrote these three hooks, they are not going to affect one another. As you can see, I can add anything. Uh, and uh, yeah, the naming of the destructuring can be anything. So can, I can say banana and get banana, set banana, sorry. Uh, but yeah, only, only one thing, you, you'll see that uh, all the hooks will use the use prefix. It's not something that, uh, for example, custom hooks need to implement, but the linters will yell a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But, as I said, the state in a hook can be anything. But uh, working with uh, use state hooks and um, uh, big uh, objects is not that uh, um, good. So we should uh, use a hook for every property and uh, set the, the, that uh, certain property. And this is because uh, actually the state is replaced every time. So if I, for example, in the last uh, case, set a new cart and I forget the quantity, actually that quantity is lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's a better alternative for using um, complex objects? Well, use reducer. It's another hook. It's a nice hook. Uh, it resembles a lot with uh, things that we are used to, in, if you're used to Redux. So you're using actually a basic reducer and you're feeding the use reducer hook a reducer that we are used, and an initial state, and that's it. And uh, this will return a state and a dispatch. And this is pretty familiar if you are used to with, uh, with Redux. So the basic usage of this would be, yeah, dispatch and the type of action that I want to do. This is a simple example, it's not some, something uh, extract, but this might be uh, more complex objects and uh, it makes more sense then. Okay. Another interesting hook is the use effect, and this was, is the, one of the most powerful ones, <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think use state is pretty powerful. Yeah. But yeah, uh, use, uh, use effect allows you to perform side effects, like its name tells. So like API calls, talking with external libraries, um, subscribing to event listeners and all that, updating the DOM and the UI. So these are all side effects, and we, ha we have the use effects hook to handle all this. So let's take this example. Uh, we want to display the count in the document title, and we would do something like this. And if you note, the, in both uh, methods, we have some duplicated code. So that's, that's not really good. So what we could do is use a hook. 
We have the use state hook from the previous example Gracian, Gracian showed, showed you. And then we add the use effect hook that just updates the count in the document uh, title. So this hook combines the functionality in this example, combines the functionality of component did mount and component did update from the previous slide. Uh, they run after the first render and after every update. And I will talk later about how to customize this, because you can customize this. So use effect uh, happens after render. So React guarantees that the DOM has been updated by the time uh, the effect will run. Uh, also, one important thing is that you have to use uh, use effect uh, inside the component so that you can use the variable uh, from use state and remain in the same scope. Now, in some cases, uh, you want to apply an effect after every uh, render, but in some cases, applying an effect after every render may create a performance uh, issue, right? Um, in class components previously, before hooks, we could solve this by writing an extra comparison. We would compare the previous state with the new state and see if we need to update. Uh, in this example, we pass an extra uh, parameter to the use effect uh, hook. Uh, and what does this mean? So if the count is, let's say, 5, and then our component re-renders with count still 5, because somebody else updated, uh, the React will compare 5 with the previous render 5. And uh, because the items are the same, it will skip the effect. So this is how simple we can optimize this, without any ifs, without any conditions. If you use this optimization, uh, make sure that you include in that array, uh, where I wrote count, every property that can change, and that you need to verify. So props state, uh, the properties that change over time uh, and are used by the effect uh, should be written there so you can optimize your code. You don't render every time. Now, let's say you want to run your effect only once, right, at the beginning. For example, we fetched the list of products from our backend, and when our uh, view came into uh, display, we want to run it only once. Here, what we could do is pass an empty array as a second argument. So here, React will compare uh, the, state, the next state with empty, and then when you would, you would use the effect only once. So this is the way uh, to use the effect only once. Now it just behaves like component did mount, right? Let's see another customization. We want to display the details of the product when we select an ID. We, se we select something from a list, right? Now. We don't want to want it to run it only once. We run, want to run the, uh, the effect every time when the ID changes. So first thing we could do is the remove the argument, right? So this will, ca this will cause the function to render every time uh, something updates in the view. But that's another problem, because set products will also re-render the view, and you will end up in an infinite uh, cycle. So of course, Logically, we want to send a new request to the backend when our ID changed, not when the old the products changed. So we do something like this. Here, again, the second argument from uh, use effects kicks in and helps us. Right? Really easy, really simple. So usually, uh, our code uh, looks like this. If we have different features, on component did mount, we would add listeners or uh, make requests to, the, to our backend or initialize or whatever in our component did mount. So the problem here is that, uh, in our opinion, component did mount will never be closed, right? Every time you need to add something new, you will add it there, right? So it will be an infinite change there. The same is with cleanup and removing listeners. Uh, this makes uh, these methods hard to test and hard to debug because they are, not in, they are not encapsulating a business logic. They are encapsulating something that's uh, React-related, uh, and that's not really our concern, right? Um, so
So what you could do with uh, hooks is this. You can use as many side effects as you want. One, we recommend one for every feature. So we have uh, now a clear separation. And you won't, won't be in a situation where you forgot to remove a listener, for example, because you have to check the both methods. So here you have everything side by side. Uh, so here all side, all side effects for a feature are grouped in the same method. The, side, the use effects uh, hook lets you return a function. That function that you return and you will see that in a, in, a exam, in a more complex example further along, will be used by React to clean up anything, to remove listeners and all the cleanup you need to do. So the return function, function for use effects is the same as running component will unmount. So let's see how we can build our own custom reusable hook. Yeah, so Alin showed us an example where he fetched some resources from the from an API, we can actually um, pack all that logic together. Uh, we actually can uh, add the thing that uh, it's usually linked to fetching resources, uh, is loading. Uh, we can set that as a state, and as an e uh, uh, by using a use effect, uh, we can actually trigger this fetch whenever we want. In this case, we added the dependencies as a requirement for our uh, custom hook. So whenever we pass the URL and a list of dependencies, we pass that to the use effect hook, and that will trigger uh, exactly like Alin told us, so uh, bas basically on the same logic. Using this, uh, it adds more power, so we are actually taking all the duplicated code from our components and use it in a simple hook. Okay, uh, how we can use it, actually, it's pretty simple. We are destructuring the array uh, that is uh, returned by the use HTTP. We are getting the is loading uh, property and the fetch data if we got it. And we are pass passing actually only the URL and uh, the list of dependencies. So if in our case uh, the list of products would depend on something like, I don't know, a checkbox or something like that that needs to be updated, uh, we can pass that as a dependency. Cool. Okay, so we talked a lot about uh, hooks in React. What about React Native? OK, so uh, I, I really like the hooks in React Native. So you're, you're covered, first of all. Uh, they were added as a support in uh, 0 0.59, so that's a good thing. Um, but why am I so happy that, that hooks are in React Native? Well, because in React Native, we have a lot of uh, uh, side effects, a lot of um, uh, working with um, um, native components uh, like NetInfo, keyboard, orientation, and uh, usually we, we end up uh, adding a lot of listeners in our components. Uh, we might reuse them, but uh, sometimes we might not. And yeah, for example, if we want to see uh, if the application is in offline mode, we kind of add, had, have to add uh, some um, complex patterns like high order components. So yeah. Extracting that in a hook and using that uh, wherever we want, it's great. The other thing that <laughs> I'm most uh, uh, glad that hooks are here is actually animations. Uh, in React Native, uh, we like to add a lot of animations. Uh, they are not that performance, so we have to uh, find the middle ground. Uh, but the issue is that they are kind of linked to a state or something like a lifecycle event and uh, uh, they add a lot of code in our components where we kind of pollute them. So instead of looking at a code that should be business or uh, adding logic or enhancing our application, we are actually adding a lot of animation because, as you know, animations are declarative and, yeah, we'll end up to that in, in uh, two slides. But uh, adding animations in a hook actually keeps our code cleaner and uh, drier. So I want to give you an example that happened in our application. Uh, uh, we have to support uh, our application both Android and iOS. Uh, when working with input data forms, uh, the keyboard will show up. And uh, 
that creates a lot of hassle in, in React Native. So uh, there are components that actually try to mitigate this issue, actually, because uh, uh, once you tap an input, uh, the keyboard might overlap that input, and yeah, it's not the best uh, uh, user experience. So we have to make small adjustments, and yeah, there are components, as I said, but we didn't find anyone, any component that actually uh, fits uh, the best solution for both iOS and Android. And because we have a really good client, uh, yeah, they want the same look and feel on both of them. <laughs> so we started adding uh, listeners, keyboard listeners, to make small adjustments in our components. And we ended up with seeing <laughs> listeners almost everywhere. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's a thing that we could extract actually in a hook. And add all that logic in a custom hook where we actually um, subscribe to the keyboard and then remove it. Uh, I've copied the code from uh, React uh, Native um, uh, website, and uh, for, uh, actually they have a, an example for uh, keyboard uh, adding listeners. So I've only switched that from uh, basic component use to a hook, and that's why you'll see the two, two um, error functions below to mimic more of what they have. So what I've did here, I'm using a state to actually save the keyboard is on or off, so it's a boolean. Uh, and uh, yeah, in an use effect hook, I'm uh, listening for, for those two events, and at the end, I'm returning actually an error function. Uh, as Alin said, uh, this will be called when the component will unmount, actually. So you, you can see that uh, because I'm adding uh, the listeners and removing them in the same location, I'm more sure that uh, I won't be missing one line. For example, if uh, did hide listener uh, wasn't removed, I would get to memory leakages. So this is a pretty compact hook that uh, actually saves us a lot of code and uh, of, uh, of testing, uh, test, uh, testing a code that actually resides in multiple components. So as I said, animations are my favorite part. I like them. They are add a lot of uh, great user experience. Uh, we like to use them. But <coughs> yeah. Um, Every time I start writing an, uh, an animation, I even though I kind of know the, and I did some, some animations and I know the structure, but I have to open the React Native documents again and again because they are, yeah, interesting. Uh, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're a declarative way and uh, they might be uh, lowering the performance of our application because if you're not writing them uh, uh, properly, uh, you might end up uh, uh, hitting the, the, the bridge too, too many times. So, uh, yeah. Why I, I, I've added the low performance? Because uh, if you're using hooks and you work hard at one hook, you can then reuse and not bother again. Yeah. And usually, uh, animations are repetitive. So, in uh, different components that we implemented, uh, we had the same behavior, and we could have extracted that, but sometimes they were linked to something specific for that component, and then we ended up reusing almost the same uh, bits of code. Uh, okay, so I will show you our, uh, uh, our example. So you will see now um, a classic animation. Ha. Ha. Right, it okay, it's okay. <laughs> so if you can zoom in. There you uh, go. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so our component was actually trying to mimic a, a ripple effect. Uh, so when the user taps the microphone uh, to speak, uh, it will start rippling. And yeah, it, it created a nice effect. But because of that, we actually added a lot of code. So as you can see, uh, if you can scroll down, yeah. uh, the start animation actually is doing something. Uh, it's doing a delay because we are trying to reuse this component and somehow uh, this ripple should uh, propagate in 
uh, at the 500 millisecond intervals. Mm -hmm. uh, they are trying to, uh, the, the animation is actually growing and uh, we are uh, actually changing the scale and opacity. Uh, as you can see, we are using the native driver, so with this one we are, we are safe. <laughs> yeah. And then in parallel, we are actually scaling it down at the end to restart it. So that's fine, but because it's, uh, in, an, it's, it's, in, it's in a component, component we are actually uh, having difficulties testing it. So if you tried to test an animation, you might, not, you might know what I'm talking. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's something that we, we didn't like. So what we did actually was the animation part. We got it out from, from a component and we defined a custom hook with the same principles. Of course, of course the code is, looks almost the same, but because it's only wrapped in a use effect hook and we are actually... Mm -hmm. Done. That, that's that, yeah, that's yeah. A use effect hook and we are actually... Uh, triggering this once and uh, doing the same logic as before, we are kind of removing that animation part from our component, using it in a hook that if we decide we might not even test it, <laughs> and we, we're, we're not going to have a heart attack when we'll see our components with only 70% code coverage. We are now safe because we can test our components and yeah, the animations can stay in a special place. And that's the usage. We are actually using the circle ripple with uh, 500 milliseconds uh, difference and uh, those will actually start propagating and uh, uh, making the animation nice. So yeah. So now we have a clear separation between yes. where you define it and where you use it. Yeah. And at least where we are using it, we can test the entire component. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. How okay. Great. Good. So what's next? That's the big question. Well, I've anticipated some of, of your questions, and then I'll, I'll try to respond to these and the ones that you have. So, do I have to use hooks? No, <laughs> you're not. Uh, so, it's uh, the, the, the final releases of both React JS and React Native are backwards compatible, so you, you're not obligated to use hooks. You, you, there is no timeline to switch from components to hooks. Uh, you can use both. Uh, my recommendation for you is to try them, see the power of hooks, and yeah, if you like them, you can actually uh, convert an, an entire application from uh, class components to uh, functional components using hooks. Uh, another question is, uh, am I co uh, covered by switching from React component to functional components, or let's say it uh, some, some, some uh, other way, are all the lifecycle events uh, available using uh, uh, hooks? The question to the answer to this question is actually no, but I have a question for you. Uh, who uses component did catch? Okay, <laughs> one, two, okay, three. Okay, uh, get snapshot before update. What's that? Okay, one, <laughs> nice. So these two life cycles are not covered. Uh, React team says that they will cover them, but for the moment they are not. But as you see, uh, it's only few examples. I'm not really sure when you used it, <laughs> <laughs> so we can talk after. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, you're basically covered. <laughs> What's the performance? Yeah, uh, this that was actually my first question when I saw hooks. Uh, I did some research, and it seems that uh, there are some benchmarks that are testing hooks versus higher order components, and hooks lost, <laughs> but not by much. <laughs> So yeah, they are not as performant as uh, high order components, uh, but uh, they are still there. So tests, uh, yeah, this is a misfeeling. When uh, I saw the hooks that there were functions, I said, yeah, I can test them as a simple function. But then I thought, okay, but you have to import React and that adds a lot of, uh, of stuff actually. Uh, so the hooks, the function hooks are actually special functions. Uh, they cannot be tested as simple functions, so some fiddling uh, needs to be done, but they can, uh, can, can be tested. Uh, and the best thing, as I said before, is that by extracting something, 
and not reusing that, that part in 10 places, you are actually testing one thing in one place and that's it. And uh, if you think about it, uh, state components were hard to test before also. So yeah, that's not, a, that, that's not the best, uh, the uh, worst trade-off. So that's a good thing. This is it. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> There's one, one last slide. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, thank you. So, you have any questions? I have a mic here. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. So, um, I've actually talked about this with a couple of people and we were asking ourselves if hooks completely replace class components, right? Mm -hmm. So you already said there's two life cycles which yes. are not covered, which people rarely use, but there are use cases. Let's leave those aside, right? Yeah. Do you still see other use cases for using class components where hooks just don't do the job? Well, it, it, it depends. So if you are making the switch now, it's hard to fill all the gaps. So, for example, in our case, we are actually using Redux. So we are kind of waiting for an alpha build uh, now in, in Redux to come out with hooks. Um, but yeah, so for, for, a, for a period of time, we'll still be using class components. And probably in the future, we might switch to functional components only because uh, we, are, uh, we have a lot of uh, gain for, out of this. And yeah, why not, to te why not test it uh, in a small project and see the performance and see the issues and then go from there and decide? Yeah, for, for me, uh, I think more and more languages go towards functional programming. Yeah. So that's a, that's, I see a trend there. Even Java now with the new APIs went to more and more functional programming. Um, so yeah, I think the future for React, I think it will be using more functions than, than classes. Yeah. Hello, I have a hey. question uh, regarding performance. Yeah. In all your uh, examples, you are using uh, anonymous callbacks for, uh, for uh, callback uh, handlers, yeah. for components. Mm -hmm. Will that affect uh, performance compared to class components where you can use uh, class-bound methods? Meaning that uh, each, each render of your parent component will actually force the child component to re-render because you will uh, give a new, new yeah. instance of, yeah. of that well, function. Yeah, well, we try to keep our examples simple. as minimal yeah, and simple as possible. But yeah, I haven't tested. We can you avoid that using something that will not trigger the re-render of uh, your child components? Not sure I understand exactly. So let's say you have uh, your parent uh, component that has the state, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, you want uh, to increment the, the state using a callback from a, a child component. Using uh, the class method, the class component, you can have a class bound method, meaning that uh, the method will be the same for that component, no matter how many times the render method will be will be called. But in this case, how can you how can you avoid uh, passing a new function every time the 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 component renders? Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. So I'm not really sure. Probably you can use Mimo. Memo, uh, there's, yeah, there's, a, there's hook. a hook. Yeah, but I, how can you access the state in that okay. uh, callback? Not sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was a question. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. <laughs> so it's an open question if you have the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, okay, so uh, if you have uh, one more question, I will uh, pass the mic. If not... Yeah, solution. Uh, so, uh, from now on, the conference will continue on two tracks. Uh, this will be one track, and another track will be at the, uh, the other floor. Uh, we will have a short break for networking and coffee, and uh, then we will continue with uh, Natalia and Dimitri. Please give a round of applause for these two guys. <laughs> <laughs>